Hello guys and welcome to my first ever Soul Rare video. My name is Johnny. I am about to turn 30 years old soon. I might not look it. I hope I don't look it. I mean, especially if you if if you think away the beard, I look like 12. So, hopefully, you guys are excited to jump in onto this channel. Before we get into anything on this one, I just want to clarify, nothing that I mentioned in this video is financial advice. I am just giving you information on what I know about this game. And of course, with things like crypto and of course, your money investments, you got to make sure that you do your own research and just tread carefully. So today we're going to be diving into SoulRare. It's the first time that I am jumping into this one in terms of content creation and it has left me so excited about the future, guys. Because if you don't know, I am a FIFA YouTuber that has just recently discovered this game through a buddy of mine. Uh, his name is Nepenthes. He is a YouTuber with over 3 million subscribers. He's like a big bro in the community to myself. I personally am a YouTuber that has around 400,000 or above uh, subscribers right now on his channels on YouTube. And I've decided I wanted to dive into this beautiful, beautiful game that is so rare that I, 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 I legit have been thinking about this game 24-7 lately. It's just incredible how quickly something can, can go from, oh, this is interesting, to, oh my god, I can't think of anything else. So, yeah, here I am now, and I am here to explain to you why I got into so rare, what I think of it, and also giving the beginners a little bit of a run through as well, explaining you guys how this game works to the best of my ability because I'm still new to the game, so I am learning as well. So if I'm telling you anything wrong, anyone that has found this channel that has some sort of experience, let us know in the comments down below if I am saying anything wrong about this game and teach me and the community in here. One of my main goals is going to be creating a hub for people to come into every time they are thinking about so rare so that they can go into the comments and talk to others that have taken part in this community and in this game as well to kind of help each other out give each other tips and tricks that would be a beautiful thing if we could achieve that for the future oh by the way talking about beautiful things to achieve um can you please use my link <laughs> in the description down below guys because i've just discovered this um after watching a bunch of so rare content on youtube if you want to take part in so rare please use this link which is going to be the first link in the description down below it costs you nothing it helps you and me if you go ahead and get this game or take part in this game while using my link right here I will be your referrer, basically. And if you get yourself five items on the market, limited items through bidding on them, you actually will be getting a limited card for free. That can be Kylian Mbappe. That can be an insane talent. That can be anything. Anyone that is taking part in this game is available to you right there. And that has me excited. And if 30 people use my link to use me as a referral and then go ahead and get those five players, we get a unique item and one in one on this platform, which would be an incredible video if we could pull that off. I'm so excited about this. I can't even tell you the players that you have to bid on can be like one euro. So as you can see here at the bottom, Nepentes, my buddy, he has gone ahead and been my referral. So I've used his code and then both of us got a limited item for free, which is nice. So what is so rare about? It is basically a game that is like fantasy football, right? That uh, is something that a lot of you guys know. FPL, Fantasy Premier League, for example. You guys build your teams and then you hope that the players perform well so that you earn points through them. And then you rank up within the rankings and get yourself some rewards in the future, hopefully, if you can pull that off. But the chances of actually getting rewarded playing FPL in terms of real life money are very, very slim, right? We all know that. Now, this game basically goes to the extent that Ultimate Team for me now has become absolutely useless. So I am a FIFA YouTuber. I play career mode. I make content on that. I still do. But I used to also make Ultimate Team content, which is the online side of things on FIFA where you have special items of players and you start off with nothing and try and build up to a sick team. But obviously, 
That only goes each year. You can only go into FIFA 22, start building a team there, have a good one at the end of it, and then FIFA 23 already comes out and you start off fresh. On so rare, that basically doesn't exist, right? Any player you buy now is yours forever. As long as you don't want to sell, he's yours forever and they are useful forever. So that is a huge thing that a lot of people need to keep in mind when it comes to this game. It is not a seasonal thing in terms of like, oh, the players that you have this year, you can't use them next year. If I buy Mbappe right now, I can use him in like eight years time, hopefully. That's basically the plan. So you can invest into some of these talents thinking, okay, this guy's going to be sick in the future. I want some points off of him. So let me just explain to you how it works, generally speaking, though. So for example, you see the point totals here for Genduzi, right? He is a player that is currently at Marseille. Um, don't even think about like how the card looks, what color it is and all of that. I'm just going to quickly explain to you the point system. Every single player gets a point total from 0 to 100 in each game you play, right? Each game they play in real life. If they get subbed on or actually play in the starting lineup, they get a point total. With Gunduzi, you can see right here, in his last five games, he has averaged a total of 48 points. You can go from 0 to 100 points. 100 points is the maximum that a player can get. But you can actually exceed that maximum. Let's say Gunduzi did get 100 points. You can exceed that maximum by this bonus right here. Every player has a certain bonus level to them. For example, this Genduzi has a plus 5% bonus. So if you get 100 points with him in that week where he actually had a sick game in real life for Marseille, got like two assists and his team kept the clean sheet, he's obviously going to be rewarded for it as a midfielder and he will get yourself like 100 points and then the 5% bonus on it it's going to be 105 points. So that is a huge thing to keep in mind. The bonuses are very important, which was something that I personally didn't pay any attention to at the beginning. But the base system of the game is every player, if they play the game, 0 to 100 points. <coughs> and that's obviously huge. Now, at the same time, this bonus right here is based on the 2021-2022 season, which means this item is an item from the 2021-2022 season. Now, why is that important? The reason why that is important is if you go into the market right here, you see four different categories. You see limited, rare, super rare, unique. Let's sort it by limited. First of all, these are the gold items, right? So these ones, every player, let's say this Colin Warner, he exists a maximum of 1,000 times in this form. As a limited item, he's only available 1,000 times. And as you can see in the top left corner of every player, it says which season this player is from, which is very important because every year, every limited card gets released a maximum of 1,000 times. Every season at the beginning, we, we start fresh basically and these players get re-released, right? That's how it works. That's how they keep bringing on items onto the market without really growing the user base and then the players obviously not being available anymore because if you think of it, right now there are like hundred thousands of managers taking part in so rare and if we only had players from one season it would be impossible for people to take part in this game so every single year so rare goes ahead and releases a maximum of 1000 limited items of a player then the next year uh, the next tier sorry we have the rare ones these ones get released a hundred times so it is a massive gap between limited and rare so divided by 10. it continues like that super rares are only only released 10 times which makes them quite expensive. You can see it right here. Highest price for a super rare. Gabriel Slodina, a very young goalkeeper that a lot of people have faith in. Or Getson Fernandez, that a lot of people think is going to be a great talent in the future. Or Rutter right here, who is doing a decent job for Hoffenheim at the moment. So those types of players, the blue ones, are only available 10 times. They get released 10 times a season. Unique ones, kind of self-explanatory, only one item. Now, the difference between these, you can clearly see it here in the bonus. If you remember, when I showed you the red one of Genduzi, he only had a plus five bonus. The unique ones, while they are way more expensive, they also have a massive boost on them. 45% boost on their points. So this one had an average score of 55 points, right? But you got to add the 45% on top of it each week. 
each game week, they get that bonus on top of it, which is obviously massive. That's huge. So it is quite important to realize how these tiers work, what kind of bonuses they give, the unique ones with the 45, the super rare ones with the 25%, the rare ones with the 5%, the limited ones with the 5% here as well. But I can show you by my own items that it's not just the season that they get released in or the scarcity that gives you a bonus. The, what else gives you a bonus is the experience bonus. So this Unai Simon has a plus two experience bonus for me. So if you have a player in your team, they gain experience through being put into the game weeks, as far as I know. And that way you get yourself XP bonuses as well. So this Unai Simon has a 2% bonus right here. So the longer you keep these players, the more XP they gain, they gain, the better it's going to be for you. So this one so far is on level 4 out of 20 for me, 742 XP so far. So that is another thing to keep in mind when you do build your teams. Those are the tiers. I think I, I hopefully could explain it to you quite well. At the same time, we have the common tier, which is the... Uh, the tier where you don't spend any, any money, it's free to play. So if you guys want to take part in Soul Rare and kind of understand the system and how it works, commons are a really good way. As soon as you sign up, you have to choose a couple of clubs that are your favorites. And that way you get some common items given to you. And if you get lucky, you get someone really, really useful, which I did. And I'll show you in a second as well, because you can actually use commons in the tiers where you actually get rewarded with money. So that's another thing we'll get to in a second, but let's move on here and let me keep explaining things to you. So for example, this is um, game week uh, 228. All right, let's jump in there. And let me explain to you what types of teams you can compete with. So the commons, as I said, you can use five common items. Every single team that you build, no matter which competition that you want to play in, has five different players in it. A goalkeeper, a defender, a midfielder, a forward, and then an extra, which can be any position. So for example, right here, Ortego Moreno, I will use him there. I will use Christopher Trimmel. Actually, no, not him. I want to use Pavard. Pavard has had an incredible game against Wolfsburg, 83 points there. So he's going to be a good one. Uh, midfielder, Jesper Lindstrom, he has been quite solid. So I'll take him. And then for the attack, I'll go ahead and use Rafael Bore because he has been playing most of these games while Divok Origi and Malik, Malik Tillman have a bunch of zeros, which means they haven't really played. So we'll put him in there. And then as an extra, you can then go ahead and choose any player, really. The extra, it's all up to you. You can choose anyone. So I'll just go ahead and choose, uh, I don't know. I have a feeling Mbemba could maybe do a little bit better there against that side right there. So I'm going to give it to Mbemba on this one. Then you can choose a captain. As you can see here, for example, Wolfsburg is going to be playing against Bayern Munich. Bayern Munich's Pavard has a plus 5% bonus on him. As you choose a captain, it gives them a plus 20% bonus. So 25% bonus. Now think of it. I showed you earlier on that rare items and a unique item, super rares. Let's say you have a unique item and you make him your captain. I guess he goes from 45% bonus to 65 that's incredible. So you can make so many more points if you choose the right captain. So this was the casual league where you don't actually have to go ahead and um, really uh, spend any money to play to take part in it. So we can confirm this lineup here. I'm going to be using this team for the week of 17th of December to 21st, which is going to be the, um, the week of where we actually have weekend league games, right? Yeah, 17th to the 21st. So those are the actual like big game weeks where most people take part. Because obviously, as you can see here, we have a game week in midweek as well, 14th to 17th. Now you might ask yourself, okay, normally the games are being played on the weekends. What can you do in there? Now you can see in here, in the midweek game week, I have an all-star limited team that is lined up. The four players here, Kostic, actually, let me move my camera here. The four players that you can see here on the right-hand side, Okumu, Marco Royce, Ilas Bebu, and Filip Kostic, they actually have games, okay? They have games midweek. In the Bundesliga, they have a, a bunch of games. But Unai Simon, who plays for the Spanish side, uh, Athletic Bilbao, does not have a game. So I'm going to get zero points for him. These four are the only ones I can rely on. And I've put my captaincy on Marco Royce because I think Dortmund could do really well. They have had a bad result this week, so hopefully they will pick it back up in this one and Marco Royce can kind of make up for him missing. Hopefully we can get a decent amount of points, so that's something to keep in mind. 
That is the midweek. In midweek, you can have Europa League games, Conference League games, uh, international games, those ones, and of course, the league games as well. So if you want to take part in midweek, it will be quite important for you to have international players that play for big clubs that play in the European competitions to be able to compete in the midweek game weeks as well. So going back to the competitions themselves, the limited tier is the first tier that you can get started with while spending money. As you can see, requirements, you have to have five limited items to take part. Now, each league has a different requirement on top of it. Once you have the five limited cards, you have to make sure that in the all-star division, you can basically use any player you want. That's where most of the players are going to be taking part, right? That's going to be a good thing. The under 23s, there you can only use 23-year-olds or younger, right? Which is going to be very important because if you do well in there, you get rewarded players that are 23 or younger. And those ones tend to be quite expensive because they obviously have a lot of upside to them. These are talented players in real life that could become superstars in the future. So people tend to invest into the younger players, hoping that they turn out to be the next Mbappe. So that's a very, very important division that I personally really want to take part in, but haven't been able to do so because the under 23s are quite expensive if you want to put together a good squad. So that's something to keep in mind. The Champion Europe, it includes Bundesliga, La Liga, Liga, A, Premier League, and Serie A teams, which means top five teams in the world. Even though Liga A currently is not considered the top five league in terms of the FIFA rankings, I think Portugal overtook them. But in so rare, the top five leagues, if you have players from those leagues, they are eligible to play in the Champion Europe. The Challenger Europe, on the other hand, includes all these ones. It includes the Austrian Bundesliga, the Eredivisie, the Championship. So all the leagues outside of the top five, including the Champions League, Conference League, and Europa League as well. So there you can go ahead and try and earn yourself some of these players from that tier itself. And then, of course, going into the rare, we have the same types of um, competitions. But then we have the pro ones as well added into it, which is something that I personally haven't really understood yet. So if you guys can explain to me what the difference is between All-Star and All-Star Pro, let me know in the comments down below. I'd happily uh, go ahead and read through it. Now here, in the rare division, you can play with at least four rare items, right? Four rare cards with at most one common. So... In this one, for example, where I put my team together, this is the rare divisions, the red items. I have these four red items, the rare items here, which actually cost a bunch of money. And I got lucky when I signed up for the page. I chose Liverpool as my favorite team and it gave me Alisson. Now, that's where you can use a common item. And this is a tactic that a lot of people do when they play so rare. When they want to take part in the rare divisions, they go ahead and use a player like this in the All-Stars because... Someone like Alisson will get you a lot of good performances a lot of times because Liverpool is a very solid team, of course. And the thing is, you will get his points, but they get a minus 45% subtraction, which is a bad thing. But at the same time, if you wanted to buy a rare goalkeeper, they are extremely expensive. Upwards of 2,000 euros if you want to have anyone that just remotely, remotely plays in a starting lineup. So that just shows you it's very important to get lucky with the common items and get yourself a good goalkeeper. So for me personally, it is Alisson. And then the rest of the team is filled with actual rare players for me to be able to take part in the week of all-star rare competitions. Now, at the same time, though, the rare competitions, the reason why so many people want to take part in there is because in the all-star rare there is a different reward tier that you do not have in the other ones below it. So for example, here you can see we have thresholds. This is a term that you will hear a lot. People call a lot of teams threshold teams. So that means you build a team, but you don't necessarily aim to get top 300. You don't necessarily aim to get first, second, or third. What you are trying to do is to earn Ethereum as a reward. What you're trying to do is to earn these amounts right here. If your team scores 205 points and above, you get rewarded 0.01 Ethereum. 
If your team scores 250 points, you get rewarded double that 0 0.02. And that way, a lot of people build threshold teams. They try to make them as cheap as possible. Maybe only spend like 500, 600 euros on it. And then within 10 weeks, if they get lucky and they get, they score over 250 points, the team that they spent 600 euros on has earned them within the 10 weeks, 670 euros. That's a threshold team. You try to get yourself a very good squad together to be able to take part in these thresholds and gain some Ethereum to then go ahead and invest into other players to strengthen your team to maybe start challenging for these upper tiers. Because in these upper tiers, with the tier three rare items here, if we go in here, if you finish 99th to 300 in this week, for example, you can go ahead and... Um, you will get one of these players, right? One of these players, it shows you on the right-hand side how many there are left of these. So you can actually get yourself one of these players as a reward. It is basically randomized. Tier two players, you can see right here, if you rank up even higher than that, you get one of these players right here. And then tier one is obviously even better, but the star tier is ridiculous because there you can get yourself someone like a Kylian Mbappe. A Kylian Mbappe, for example, as a rare item, currently goes for <laughs> this is insane 23,000 euros so that just shows you people are fully aware Kylian Mbappe is only 22 he has so much upside to himself in the future and they expect him to be one of the best players in the world in the future and he already is right so they get a lot of points from him and they know that he's going to rise in value because he's extremely popular and people want to own Kylian Mbappe as a as an NFT, as an NFT in this game, which obviously ups his value a lot. So if you do get lucky, you can get into one of those uh, tiers, which is obviously going to be great. But again, to play in the rare leagues right here, these ones that I explained earlier on, it costs a lot of money. Oh, actually, I see right here, pros, you can use three rare items and then two super rare cards. Oh, Okay. Okay. I see now. So the super rares are even more expensive. So that's nothing for me. I can only take part in this one and I'm happy there, even though my team absolutely sucked. So hopefully now that I have explained to you guys, the tiers of uh, the, the items that are in the game and the competitions that you can take part in, and especially right here with the limited, with the price pool, I can show you one more time because I haven't shown you this. So this one, for example, you can earn the same types of tiers, but there is no threshold. So you won't earn any Ethereum unless you get first, second, or third, which is obviously amazing if you can pull that off. But in those game weeks that are finished, you can see for the limiteds, there were how many people registered? 15,692. I personally finished in, let's see, All-Star Limited, 2,000th. So if my team right here, if my team here did better, right? If this team did a little bit better, I could have been in there in the first 1,600 or whatever it was, and I wouldn't got, would have got myself a tier three limited. That is something that I'm trying to work towards. I want to be able to have a team that's going to be performing really well. These are the players that I have put in there for myself to gain some decent points. Most of them have performed kind of nice. I'll have to admit they did well, but no one had an outstanding week in my week, in my team. So hopefully next week we can see some outstanding performances and some 70s and 80s. That way I can secure myself a push into the into the tiers to get rewards, which is going to be a nice thing. In the Champion Europe, I put together this team. Unai Simon sadly had a terrible week. Same goes for Elas Bebu. Marco Royce and his Dortmund team struggled. Philip Kostic didn't really do too well. And the best performer was Jiku for me. And then for the All-Star Rare... You can see it here. These guys did a terrible, terrible job. But at the same time, while I didn't get rewarded for having those players in my team in terms of like point totals, if you go onto the page, oops, that's the wrong button. Sorry about that, guys. Let's move back over here. Um, if we go to the page, so rare data, that is the page. And you go to Johnny Sports and then my gallery, you can check out the roster prices. So I put one Ethereum into the game, which currently equates to $3,824. Actually, that's 0 0.96 Ethereum. I put one Ethereum into it, though, and I lost a little bit of it because 
of um, gas fees. If you guys know anything about crypto and especially Ethereum, gas fees are basically transaction fees, which cost a lot right now on the Ethereum blockchain. Hopefully they can fix that in the future because right now, if you sell a player, buy a player or do whatever with Ethereum, it actually takes away a little bit of a chunk out of it, which is quite annoying. But it is something that we have to deal with in order to take part in this economy right now. So I have put in one Ethereum to get started. I'm really happy with it. And this is the team that I bought myself. And some of these players, despite me not really earning any big rewards so far, some of these guys have gone up in price, which is another thing that is going to be quite important for a lot of people out there because it's not just about playing for rewards and doing well or doing bad. It's also about picking the right players and seeing them increase in value over the next couple of weeks. So for me, last week... I bought this Marco Royce. I bought him for 0.144 Ethereum. Now, if we go into Marco Royce here and we can check how much he has been selling for as a limited lately, you can see that the latest public offer was 0.173 Ethereum. That is a massive amount of gain compared to what I paid for my Marco Royce. A huge, huge gain in terms of his price. So I could sell him now and make a profit. So it's it's not just about getting the points and doing it for the rewards and doing well and getting lucky. It's also about picking the right players and seeing their price increase. You can see a bunch of the players that I've bought, especially the most expensive one, Yari Versharin here. I have gone ahead and made a 17% profit on him already. Marco Royce, 34%. Unai Simon, 12%. This one, 5.6%. This one, 22%. Uh, Kostic, 40% increase. Osterwalde, 33% increase. Of course, it's not just going up. We also have a bunch of players where we have lost a little bit of value. 15.5% on this young man right here, which is a huge L that I've taken on him. Then we have certain others that actually, this one I got for free. This one has no value at all, so it's all okay. But uh, another one that I spent a little bit on, 2.1% lost on that one. And yeah, Overall, though, I think I'm way up in terms of what I put in compared to what I could take out of it right now. So if I was to sell this team, everything that I have right now, I think I would be up quite a bunch in terms of percent. So it showcases once again, if you make the right decisions in terms of your purchases and you stay patient and you don't necessarily play the game weeks, you can still increase the amount of Ethereum that you will have in your hands if you, would, if you were to sell everything. So that's another thing that I like about SoRare. It's not just about how you do in the uh, in the game weeks. It's also about making the right investments. So for me, I'm amazed by SoRare. I'm all in. I really, really want to take part in this economy. And I think SoRare has a bright future ahead of them. I have some rewards right here, by the way. And I think this one is, let's go here. This one is a tier two common, not too bad. Okay, we got ourselves Nicola Moro. I played in the casual common league. I finished 52,676th. And that way I got myself a tier two common Nicola Moro. This one is the free to play tier, obviously. Let's see how good that guy is. How has he been performing lately? Can he be improving my casual common squad or is that an L? Ooh, under 23. Oh yeah, he is. Hey, not too bad. Some decent performances. There we go. See, that is my reward for the week. I'm happy with that. I'll put it, I'll pop him into my uh, casual team here. Do I have anyone else that outperforms him? Let me see. Do I have anyone? I have Jesper, who has been quite solid, but I can take him out. I'm not happy with him. So where's the, oh, he has no game, does he? Oh, the Ukrainian. Ah, now I realize. Hold on a second. The Ukrainian actually... Uh, does not have a game. Oh, wait, this was the forward. So I have to replace... Huh, I'm confused now. I have a goalkeeper, defender. That's another defender. So I guess I take him out. Yeah, let's take him out. And then I should technically be able to use him, but he has no game, right? Because he's from Ukraine. He plays for... D is that Ukraine? Dynamo? I think it is. They don't have a game this week, so I should not be including him anyways. I, I thought maybe they had a game, but... We'll keep, we'll keep the casual team like that. Uh, but yeah, that is my introduction to so Rare and to this channel. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope I could explain a bunch of what I have learned in this short amount of time to you guys as well. If you are interested, please make sure to subscribe. And most importantly, 
so that we can go ahead and get this one unique item. Please use my link. I beg you. I have no partnership with so rare or anything. Uh, so if you guys could go ahead and use this link, that is going to be the first link in the description down below. It would be amazing because I really want to get that unique item. It would be a dream come true if we can make that happen. I'm so excited to see what it's going to be. So yeah, that will be a banging video that we can work towards for the future. I will keep you guys updated on how things are going in terms of referrals. But guys, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you all. As always, this is not financial advice, just a little bit of tips and tricks that I have personally learned lately and my introduction into SoRare. It was a long video, but I think it was an important one to make so that people understand what this channel is going to be about. My new passion, SoRare, is here. And I hope you guys are here to stay. Have a good one. Take care and peace.